Sup, bros. I figured it'd be a good idea to get back into the swing of some casual celestial navigation, as I have a few more cheeky techniques coming soon. I have covered this navigational aid way back, so for those of you that are familiar with this technique, then just consider it a bit of cheeky revision. But I'll also be covering a few things that I didn't mention in the old video too, so let's crack on. With Fine North, with the North Star, Polaris. How to recognise the constellations, how to locate them in the sky, and how to use them to find your directions. Let's just observe the night sky for a moment. I imagine some of you, right off the dizzle, have already found the required constellations, and as a result, the North Star. Good job. Give yourself a pat on the back for that one. For those of you that have not, then hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to pinpoint it within a matter of seconds. So let's begin. First up, we need to locate one specific arrangement of stars in the night sky. Let's activate the constellation lines and annotations. The constellation we will primarily concern ourselves with is this one right here, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, right next door. Now let's view our entire nighttime sky. Ursa Major goes by many other names. The Big Dipper, the Plough, Big Bear, the Cup, the Pot. If any of those ring a bell, then that's great. Ursa Major is a massive constellation. It is strikingly noticeable in the night sky if you invest a short amount of time to locate it. It's one of the most easily identifiable arrangement of stars. But let's whack up a more clear, real image of it. It looks like a saucepan with the handle on the pot, right? Easy constellation to locate and recognise. Composed of some of the brightest stars in our night sky and arguably the most useful constellation in the night sky when it comes down to celestial navigation. Why? Because this single constellation allows us to locate our North Star, which goes by the name of Polaris. How? Why? Who? What? Where? Give me the deets. Well, all right then. Okay, look at Ursa Major and its source Pani aesthetics. Focus on the two stars furthest away from the handle, the far end, the tip of the cup. We shall refer to them as the pointers. Now just create an imaginary line that extends outwards sighting from the bottom star through the top. Keep going with this imaginary line and you'll bump into something very significant in our sky. This star that you bump into will be significantly brighter than any other closely surrounding stars. It's one of the brightest stars in our night sky, Polaris, the North Star, which belongs to the constellation of Ursa Minor. It is this star that every other star revolves around relative to our perspective. It remains motionless and fixated in the sky. I'll talk about why that is a bit later, but once you have located Ursa Major, created this imaginary line that leads you to Polaris, you have found the North Star. Face directly towards Polaris and you will be facing north. Turn 180 degrees, you will be facing south. Easy, right? It is easy. One constellation one line leads you to one bright star. Done. GG, easy directions. But hold the phone, Jeff. Nothing is ever that easy all of the time. Now, this is all well and good when we have visibility of this region of the sky, but you've got to take into account the variable. Ursa Major may be visible, but following the imaginary line leads you to the constellation of clouds. Well, great, thanks. No worries, though. We can get over this hurdle. Take the distance of the two stars furthest away from the handle, the pointers, and extend it by six times the distance in the direction of the alignment of those two stars. Don't do it downwards, that's wrong, upwards, the same way we did last time, with the cup. This extension will lead you to the general vicinity of Polaris. Face and walk towards this point in the clouds and you will be heading north. Six times the distance of the two stars furthest away from the handle. I'm just repeating that for emphasis. Easily done. Now let's talk about some other times where obstruction may be an issue. As the stars naturally revolve around Polaris, speaking relatively, it's natural for there to be periods where it's very low on our horizon and pretty high in our horizon. It depends which way you're facing, really. If you're facing south, then you know, you're gonna have to break your neck backwards to look at it, unless you turn around. But let's say, for example, you're in the middle of a forest and you've located a small clearing in the canopy. You're optimistic. You got a decent view of that portion of the sky. If you can find Ursa Major in this small clearing, go buy a lottery ticket when you get back. Likewise, bases of hills or cliffs, possible obstruction. So, you know, don't stand in front of a bunch of trees if you have the option not to, because it can get pretty low. 
And I'm talking like to the window, to the wall. So we've covered the constellations we need to locate, how to use them to locate Polaris, and some considerations regarding low visibility or obstruction. One more thing though, take note that the constellation will rotate. You will observe or you may have to look out for Ursa Major being upside down or tipped upon its side. It's a very important thing to remember and look out for won't always be your typical upright saucepan. But Ursa Major, in and of itself, can be used as a guide. As it rotates within close proximity to the North Celestial Pole, the centre of this grid, with Polaris a few degrees off of it, any time you're facing directly towards Ursa Major, you will either be facing northeast, north or northwest. So they're okay general directions, but being specific and utilising the constellation to its full potential is the best practice. But let's step back a bit. Why does everything seemingly revolve around Polaris? What's so special about Polaris? Why is it the North Star? Why is this star in particular the star we use to find North? What is a North Celestial Pole? Well, if we turn on the equatorial grid, this web of lines with its centre within degrees of Polaris, that is our North Celestial Pole. An explanation. Right, imagine this little person represents our planet and it's sitting on a revolving vinyl player needle which would hurt a bit, let's assume he's impervious to pain and this little person is looking directly upwards compare this to an imaginary line extending outwards of the Earth's north geographic pole around this is a bubble full of dots which represents stars but hang about, this vinyl player is rested on a gradient of 23 degrees the little person's head is facing directly towards this dot now so as the little person keeps spinning around and rotating on that needle this dot in particular remains motionless everything else seemingly revolves around this dot from his point of reference that to him is his north celestial pole in line with the planet's north geographic pole as the celestial pole is directly above and in line with our planet's north pole Whenever we turn and face the North Celestial Pole, or a star that's in very close proximity to it and walk towards it, it will take us upwards towards our North Geographic Pole. Which, if we compare it to the Earth and space, just take a moment to get used to this perspective and wait for the sun to set. How nice is that? Whack up some annotations. If you visualise an imaginary line extending outwards of our North Pole, it will point directly to Polaris, the North Star or at least a point in space that shares very close proximity to the North Star. So when we face North and look up, that's the star we see. That's the star from which everything else revolves relatively. Polaris remains motionless, directly in line with our North Geographic Pole, regardless of how much our planet revolves or travels around the Sun. Walk towards it, you will head to the North Geographic Pole. North Celestial Pole, Polaris, you dig it? Good. <laughs> So there you go, finding Polaris simple. Locate Ursa Major, which is one of the largest, most visible and most recognisable constellations in the sky. Follow the imaginary line from the tip of the cup, it will lead you to Polaris. Or if visibility is obscured, then multiply the distance of the two stars on the far end of the cup by six, and you'll be looking in the general vicinity of Polaris. Face directly towards it, you'll be facing north. So that's that. I'll leave you with this two minute simulation. If you'd like to observe how everything moves across the sky, 